RF1 teams exploiting a perfectly legitimate system that is meant to be there to help them and has the most recent exploitation of this actually thrown up two areas that F1 needs to fix. Scott, fill everybody in. What are we talking about? Yeah, so this is about Haas's attempt to get the results of the United States Grand Prix reviewed and uh, a decision made not to penalise Alex Albon in that race reviewed as well. And to nobody's real surprise, they failed quite emphatically, as we're going to get into in this video. But it's all about how Haas tried to use a system that F1 team seem to have realised in the last four years is there and are therefore using it as ev every opportunity to... To, to just do quite silly things, that, like Hail Mary attempts to get results back or prove a point or even just out of sheer desperation and not really, you know, more hope than, than expectation or anything like that. So there's quite a lot to get into it. It's exposed a, a couple of things about F1 that really aren't working as well as they should be. Yeah, the, the thing for me was just what a total waste of time this was because the whole point of this petition to review you're basically you have to bring forward new evidence that wasn't available at the time don't you and say look we've got this this changes the decision that was made at the time let's review it all again and then we get to the Haas review and the FIA and the stewards say oh great great what's your new evidence and they go oh well it's these onboards which as we know Scott they'd already th these onboards had already been dismissed yeah, it was on boards of Albon, uh, Logan Sargent and the other Williams, Sergio Perez's Red Bull and uh, Lance Stroll's Aston Martin, all, all at turn six. So on the subject of the total waste of time, uh, for this to happen, it was uh, there was one initial video hearing at which uh, Haas, Aston Martin, Williams, Red Bull and the FIA were all represented. And then Ferrari and McLaren requested permission to join as well. So you had more than half the grid were part of this video hearing, which was then, re um, was, were then adjourned for 24 hours and then reconvened just to tell them we've thrown it out. So it really was just a total waste of time just to be a big part of it was obviously this process exists. So they, the FAA kind of has to go through the motions here and do it properly. But you go through all of that, you get everyone together for has to just go. Yeah. So on boards, on boards that. Yeah. Like and the, the crazy thing about it is that um, not only was this. Uh, available at the time but it was even acknowledged in an album decision at the time by the stewards that they had chosen not to use this to, to penalise him because it wasn't complemented by other evidence. There was CC, The CCTV camera wasn't pointed at the apex of turn six, which was a, a whole other farce we'll, we'll, we'll get into. So you had, a, you had a situation here where the evidence they were using was not only known, it was, also av it was also available and it was actively considered and named in the original decision not to penalise them. So it, just, it was never going to work, never going to fly, just a total waste of time. And that's that's the issue here. There there are plenty of recent examples. Like you said, teams have cottoned on to this system, but there are too many examples of, as you said, they're just doing it as a Hail Mary, a last resort. A, let's just see if if trying to get the case reopened will, will change things in our favour. I feel like this system, there needs to be more of a deterrent. So there is a risk associated with trying to get the case reopened. We saw this uh, in the 1990s in F1, actually, where... Teams started using the appeal process more if they got a decision they didn't like or a driver was banned. or Whenever there was a sanction, people started appealing every time just to see if they could do something or find a way or get a, a clever lawyer on the case who can find a way to get them off the hook. So the FIA introduced a system where if you're going to appeal and you lose then your punishment will end up being more severe. And that scared everybody off. I feel like we're getting to that point with this system now where people are just doing it just in case. So there needs to be, I don't maybe need the same deterrent where it says, okay, if you bring this to us and there's nothing in it, then you're going to face a punishment of some sort, even if it's just financial, we've got to pay everybody's costs for, for wasting everybody's time with effectively a frivolous challenge of a decision. And just to just to layer on something onto that, something about this specifically. So while, while we're saying you know the only evidence was the was the onboards, there, there was something else as part of their written submission that Haas mentioned. Some um, uh, they basically did uh, said that in the team managers meeting that came at the following race in Mexico, there were allegedly comments from representatives of the FIA that basically said that the track limit supervision at Turn Six during the U.S. race wasn't ideal. But we know that. It was that was in. That's fair. It was in that's that was in the. It's also not news. 
it's fair. Again, it was in that stewards document. You you don't you don't admit that you can't act properly police the trap limits there because of a, a, an issue without you don't have something to corroborate it without acknowledging that it's it's ideal. It's not ideal. Um, and this kind of feeds into what you were saying there because it's a different. It's another example of how teams almost end up throwing anything at this just to see if they if it can be new evidence. Whether it's this, whether it's uh, yeah Ferrari in 2019 um, using some Karun Chandok analysis to claim that that's evidence. Um, Red Bull trying to create evidence effectively in 2021 by getting Alex Albon to recreate some lines into cops at Silverstone after the Hamilton-Verstappen clash in the British Grand Prix that year. I admire the effort with that one. You know, I, I, like, you've got to bring new evidence. Like, well, we've created some evidence. At least they, oh, they tried. It, I feel like Haas here needed, they needed to send maybe one of their NASCARs could go round the track and cut the corner that they're talking about and go, look, we've cut the corner this many times. Look how much time we gained. That, that's the new evidence here. Or as uh, as I think you or Ben Anderson suggested when we recorded a podcast about this briefly, uh, Gunter Steiner cam. Just send Gunter out uh, at the apex of all the corners just to do some home video to, to prove it. But it just shows that like sometimes you feel like they're clutching at straws because you well none of the it's almost like well maybe if we just bombard them with a quantity of underwhelming and absolutely irrelevant evidence it might actually be fine and it just isn't because the bar for this was one of the things that the FA do get really right they set the bar for this really high that's I in the document think... isn't it that wording yeah, it... is in the doc exactly I can only think of two times since in the last few years I can think of two times it's worked um, one was when Red Bull did manage to get a um, they got a grid penalty for Lewis Hamilton in, in, in Austria because genuinely new evidence was available that wasn't available at the time of the decision. That was, I think, was it the onboard 360 degree camera or something like that? Yeah, the yeah. yellow flag, yeah. Which isn't available at the time, couldn't be downloaded at the time. So that was genuinely new. And then last year, there was another complete and utter results-related farce around the US Grand Prix. I think Haas and Alpine got into it a little bit. And Alpine eventually managed to use a right review to get, uh, I think, their original result reinstated in the days that, that, that followed. So that was really, that, and that was done really, really well. So two out of the last, probably, I reckon, nine or ten cases of this being done farcically and only a couple of times it actually been worth everybody's time and that there is a comparable case here because obviously Haas were annoyed that there are a load of track limits offenses that they felt weren't punished we'll get on to the the cctv camera pointing in the wrong direction or whatever it was in a moment but there's a comparable case which is austria this year where aston martin protested straight after the race about a load of track limits offences they felt needed to be looked into, and that was successful. But the key thing here, and this came up in the Haas hearing, didn't it, was that uh, I think a couple of teams, Aston themselves and Red Bull, said that's what Haas should have done. They should have protested straight after the race. You have a small window where you can protest the results. If they'd done that, then maybe they'd have had a case, probably with what we know about the evidence, it would have still been thrown out. But it, I felt that the petition to review was being used because they missed their protest window. So they missed what they should have done and they went, ah, oh, let's just do this instead. Well, it's almost like you, you've kind of got the right idea, but you just go through the wrong channels to do it. It would be like if I'm if I'm annoyed with you and say, I think you should pay me more for doing these videos, but instead of coming to you and speaking to you about it in private, I decided I decided to do a tweet about it or something like that. And it's just like, well, that's, that's never going to work. No. Um, and, and <laughs> it probably, Promise it you that. <laughs> it probably wouldn't work if I went to you privately anyway. Um, so the way that Haas did it, this is the other thing. So, um, and the stewards did note this in dismissing their case, is that you can't, you can't, trying to review a classification because you disagree with something that happened or even didn't happen in the case of Alba not being punished. Yeah, there wasn't a steward's decision, yeah. was there? You can't you can't use the review to question decisions taken prior to the classification and for which no ruling was made during an event. That's the way the stewards referred it. So essentially, you can't review the final classification because there was nothing wrong with the final classification. So that was just that was just the wrong way to do it. You needed to you needed to do a protest, not a review of that part. Yeah, and the last thing I think we should we come to, we said this has exposed a couple of weaknesses that F1 needs to fix. There was some quite strong wording from the stewards at the end, and I, I laughed about the CCTV camera that wasn't pointing at the apex, I think was the description. But this has highlighted a wider problem around something that F1 seems plagued by this at the moment, and that's the general policing of track limits. Yeah, so the stewards, this was really strong. I, I've quite liked it. The last couple of years, I've seen the wording of certain stewards' documents have become really blunt, and they've actually used it really nicely to then 
flip it and put okay outside of the the thing that they're discussing right now what what do we learn from this what do we want Make f1 to learn from this yeah right okay fia okay f1 okay stakeholders we'd like you to look into this please so the stewards it was a damning admission said that they find their inability to properly enforce the current standards for track limits for all competitors completely unsatisfactory so the stewards admitted that they can't police the rules in their current form whether that is a problem with the rules themselves a problem with the technology that they have or both i think it is a a little bit of both so basically what and what the steward said is that they strongly recommend that a, a solution be rapidly deployed they know that they can't do this for for this year probably even the start of next year might be a little bit of a stretch they said bet, whether that's by better technology solutions track modifications a combination or a different regulation and enforcement standard basically someone that knows better than this look into this properly but i love that the stewards first of all had the um, the stones to basically just say we can't actually do our jobs properly sometimes in certain conditions and then just went right okay we're calling you out do something about it yeah I, i'm with you i like the kind of no nonsense wording it was almost a, you read the whole document it's a long document and it's almost a if you're going to waste our time with this nonsense you've got to help us police this nonsense better in the first place and i do agree with that f1 is the pinnacle of technology in in every which way possible really yet track limits which is it is a big issue is still really just guys kind of looking at zoomed in cctv manual that was one of the problems you had in austria that i mentioned earlier was there were so many breaches it was taking a guy on a computer so long to look at them all there's got to be a way and i totally agree with the stewards on this let's invest some time some money let's let's create better technology to get on top of this if this is the way we're going to police track limits yeah, it has to be done. There's, there's no, basically, the way to accurately and consistently police track limits means that for every car in every lap, you, you, you know whether they've broken the rules or not. Now, the way that F1 has it at the moment does mean that's an enormously labor intensive job because you can basically break the rules at every single corner, whether it's to your benefit or not. And there's, a, there's definitely a conversation to be had about whether you need to be this intense about track limits every single corner or if there's a, a better system to put in place but that's what this has exposed effectively that's what is put the, the the a bit a bit more scrutiny on because the FIA already acknowledged that the CCTV positioning for turn six in Austin the, the the hub of all of this aggro was flawed and needs to be fixed for next year so they were already on top of it but extra scrutiny is always welcome and having given Hass a hard time for some of the more frivolous aspects of this I do have a suspicion that part of this would have been motivated by getting something like this in writing that says this isn't good enough we need to do something about it in the future because Haas has almost indirectly got a bit of an admission there that teams broke the rules and got away with it and that it's not good enough so if that leads to change in the future even if that makes them look silly now they might count that as a win.